Hi everyone, in this video we're going to start working on solving triangles and evaluating trig function. Uh, so we want to use our knowledge of right triangle trig and Pythagorean theorem and any other triangle info that we have to, to figure out any missing information here. So the first thing I've said we need to do is find the values of all six trig functions of the named angle. So for this one, I want us to use angle alpha as our reference point. Note there is a different angle down here that we could use and we would get different answers. So I'd like to find sine alpha, cosine alpha, tangent alpha, and then we can find their reciprocals fairly easily, cosecant alpha, secant alpha and cotangent alpha. Okay, so it's really important that you imagine yourself, uh, your perspective is that you're standing over here at the corner with angle alpha. So sine of alpha, and this is the memorization part, you just have to do a little bit of memorization work. Sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse. So it doesn't matter how I orient this triangle, hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side and it's always across from the right angle. And opposite will always be straight across and in no way making any contact with angle alpha. So sine of alpha is 8 over 15. Oh, 8 over 17. Sorry if I can read carefully. Okay, cosine alpha, again, hopefully just from our memory, cosine alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. So hypotenuse should be clear. Adjacent is going to be the other side that does actually touch angle alpha. So adjacent over hypotenuse is 15 over 17. And then the last one I want is tangent of alpha. So tangent of alpha is opposite over adjacent which is 8 over 15, the one I tried to write down the first time. And then again, I hope if you remember uh, your reciprocal identities, that the rest are really easy. Sine, cosine, and tangent are the big ones. Cosecant, if I can write that correctly, is the reciprocal of sine, so it's going to be 17 over 8. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which will be 17 over 15. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which will be 15 over 8. So without knowing angle alpha, there are um, all of the values of all of the trig functions. Okay, so again, notice, I'm going to call this angle beta just for now, that if I use beta as my reference point, I would get different answers for all of these. It would rearrange them. So make sure you're really aware of which angle you're starting from. So that's part one. Part two asks to find the values of all the angles. So we've already have to have all three sides to do part one, but we can do part one without knowing any angles. So now we're supposed to do that. And this will be approximate. I don't have special values here. If I did have special values, if you recognize that you're getting any of those Excuse a yawn. Any of those nice ratios, one half, root three over two, one over root two, any of those sort of things, that so we should know that that involves a special value. But here, none of my ratios boil down to anything I recognize. Okay, so if I want to find the values of the angles, I already know that this one is 90 degrees, so that's easy. But let's work on alpha since it was labeled. Uh, alpha, I know a ton about the values of the trig functions. If I want to find the value of alpha, I just need to use an inverse trig function. So pick your favorite. It doesn't matter. Any of these first three would be great. I'm going to use the bottom one and say that alpha has to equal the inverse tangent of 8 fifteenths. And you can ask your calculator for that. So again, if this was a special value, I would expect an exact answer. Otherwise, I'm expecting you to use your calculator and give me an approximate answer for this. So I'm just going to check really quick. For right triangles, I'm going to want you to try and be in degree mode unless a problem specifically tells you otherwise. I want you to get that practice in degree mode. So I'm going to switch to degree mode, and I'm going to type in inverse tangent of 8 over 15. And it tells me that that is 28.07 degrees approximately. All right. So if we also want to find angle beta, we could do it the same way. But there's actually a shortcut for that. We know 
that the angles have to add up to 180 degrees, which means if we take the 90 out of it, alpha and beta have to add up to 90. So here's what we have. We have alpha plus beta plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees, which means alpha plus beta is, 100, oh, is 90 degrees. There we go. And now that we have an estimate for alpha, 28.07 degrees plus beta is equal to 90 degrees. We just have to subtract. And what are we going to get there? So 61 point, oh, too many decimals for my brain at the moment. 90 minus 28.07, 61.93. Okay, so beta is about 61.93 degrees. Okay, so up here, 61.93, and alpha is 28.07, approximately. Okay, so we should be able to find any missing sides and angles in a triangle. In this problem, it doesn't specifically say missing sides, but in order to find the values of the trig functions, you'll have to do that right away anyways. Okay, thanks for watching.